months ago, I was the director of 39th Street District, um, which this is where Pride has always happened for the last 30 years, mostly. Um, and it is the historic gay entertainment district, and it is in the process of revitalization. But taking on a festival and Pride as big as this one was a little bit much for a, a, a nonprofit commercial district with a budget of less than like 30 grand, right? Like, I mean, it was, that was kind of a big deal. Um, it just made sense to start a new organization. We did that in April. We have 10 people on our actual board and closer to 30 people on our advisory council that are all professional people, members from the community that have either been involved before, but a lot of people have never been involved in Pride. They've never been involved. They, you know, they've done opening night, they've planned arts fest. There's a lot of people that are now involved in Pride that maybe haven't been in the past. Um, and that's really exciting. Lots of fun changes, some out of necessity and some out of just like trying to make a better Pride. Um, some of the ones out of necessity were that we needed to reduce the cost and the scope of Pride this year because we're kind of in a regrouping transition year. Um, and so we've moved the parade to Saturday. So you have normally been on a Sunday. We, um, but it's usually been the last thing that happens for Pride. And instead we decided what if we kick off the whole festival in, in the day with the parade and start with that. Because if you've ever been to the Pride Parade, it is a lot of people. Estimates have been as high as 85,000 people um, that line this street. Everyone who's ever been in the parade will tell you that when they come up over that hill walking down the parade and they see, you know, tens of thousands of people screaming and, and waving pride flags, that it's like the best feeling ever. And so to be able to harness that energy and bring it in to the district and how people actually stay in the district all day. We're doing a um, kind of a, a green zone, red zone situation is what we're calling it. So we'll have red zone vendors will be things that are like kind of adult content like dispensaries and um, you know, laundry shops and things like that. Um, and we'll have that in a, in a like designated uh, fenced in area. And then the rest of the street will be green zone. So it's, it should be appropriate for all ages, family friendly. We're gonna have a family zone that's being curated by um, the Love family. So that'll be pretty exciting. The family zone will have community plaza at the west end of the street where um, Expression Church and Diver Diversity Center are. Um, Diversity Center is doing a health fair in their parking lot, so health and wellness related to LGBT stuff will be there in their parking lot. And then on the east end, which is where most, th most things have usually happened, it will still be where most things happen. There will be a main stage, um, there will be food trucks, beer tent, all, the, all of those good things that we've always had. Because we are a new organization and, and because we are transitioning from the previous year, we did a full rebrand um, and we worked with nominee agency. But in that process of, of the rebranding, they, they had this idea to do a Faces of Pride uh, campaign. So it started out that we, we started shooting pictures and we posted them on our website and our social media to show like these are, these are your, this is your community, you know? When we knew we were gonna get this space, I said, what about a pop-up gallery? The idea being that, um, that maybe you will see these faces and, and see some of the people that you know, or at least know that maybe they look like someone you know. And, uh, and so, you know, the LGBT folks of this community are diverse and, and vast and multitudes. Like, I don't think people realize how many there are um, just because, like, maybe we're not all visible, but we're, but we're living lives. And so, um, by sharing their portraits and then also their interviews, everything is a, this is a excerpt from one of the interviews from Faces of Pride, and it's like what it's like to be LGBTQ in Oklahoma, and it's not easy for everyone. For some, some people have an easier time than others, and I think you see that as you, as you read through the stories. Um, but to us, that was a really important thing to share and to highlight um, with our community. And it's just fun to get to turn a historic club into a pop-up gallery full of, you know, pictures of our favorite people and um, surprise people a little bit. OklahomaCityPride.org is the place to go. Um, all of our handles on social media are OKC Pride Fest. So you can follow us at OKC Pride Fest on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I don't think we're on Snapchat, but someday. And, uh, and get all the information you need.